Thank you for joining me for a very special video collab. Um, I have gotten together with a wonderful group of YouTubing resellers, and we are all doing a video um, with the topic being bolos. So if you uh, came from somebody else's channel, thank you, welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. So this started, uh, this is the second year we're doing this. So I guess we could call it a tradition now. And the tradition was started by the amazing Kelly Schaffner. Um, and then this year, Keegan, the teen reseller, took the helm and planned it all out and gathered the troops, if you will. And here we are. There is a list down below whoop, 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 uh, of all the resellers' channels, um, specifically uh, their video for this collab. So I hope you'll take a look at all of them. If I'm the last one, okay. I am the small fish in this pond, so I'm really honored to be included. So if you're a reseller, you probably know what a bolo is. In fact, you probably know what it is, even if you aren't, because it's a term that's used in different things. Like, it's be on the lookout. So it would fit just as well into a crime thing. Be on the lookout for a red Mazda, 66, um, yada, yada, yada. Uh, anyway, so when we are outsourcing, bolos are things we keep our eyes open for because we would like to pick them up because we know they're a good brand or a good style and they're going to hopefully flip sometimes for a lot of money, sometimes because they'll flip quickly, sometimes both. We all have our own um, agenda, if you will, or strategy. I, I have kind of a combination. I like to find things that will flip fast, but I do find that some of the higher priced items may sit for a bit, but it's worth it. So last year, we ended the video with five things we wanted to find this year. And I've got notes, I've got my laptop, Oop. Um, so I can talk a little bit about some of the companies actually of the ones later on. But anyway, so we ended it with five things we wanna find this year and we're starting with that, did we find them? All right, I had to go back to last year's video and watch that part, because I didn't remember. I had, I had categories, not just brands. So my first category was jeans, which I know you're probably thinking jeans. That's what is, what, what is that? Well, the thing is, is I feel like jeans is a, is a missed opportunity for me because I don't source them very much. There's just too many like variables and I'm, I'm uh, insecure about what jeans to pick up. Some people will tell you that all jeans will sell eventually. Uh, that hasn't really been my case, and maybe it's true and they just can take a long time. I would like to pick up jeans and I would like to pick them up strategically, uh, but that just there's just too many factors. Like I don't think uh, skinny jeans are trending now like they were last year, and I, I, can't, I never know what is trending. Um, but along the lines of everything will sell eventually, um, there are still people wearing skinny jeans and they always will because they like how they feel and they like how they look. I like boot cuts jeans. I've always liked boot cut jeans and I don't care if it's trending, though the only jeans I own right now are straight, but whatever, you get my picture. So was I successful? Not really. I, I don't think I could tell you right now what I should definitely be looking for. Um, and yes, there are brands that are, are more bolos than others, but in most of them, I believe, um, there's subcategories of the brand. It still has to be the right style. So I'll just give you these numbers. In 2023, I bought 19 pairs of jeans while outsourcing. I sold 20. So, I mean, in a, sex, in a, in a sense, I was successful because I sold more than I bought, right? But I still don't feel like I know it and I still don't source it a lot. Um, I don't go to thrift stores that often. Uh, I have found that my sourcing has relied more on the bins and yard sales lately. Um, but I did go to a thrift store, two of them, last week because of sales and they have entire jean racks. So it's, an, in some sense, it's easy because they separate them and you can just go through them. But our Goodwills have mostly crappy jeans 
And so I just don't have the patience to go through all of them because to find that one needle in a haystack. Plus they're so packed in that you can't easily move them to look at the brands. So I just tend to just like walk by them and see if anything catches my eye, which really doesn't work for jeans. But uh, I just, I'm just now in a more of a bins and yard sale frame of mind over regular thrift stores. So I still go. Um, I just, just, maybe I'm not as thorough. I could literally spend six to eight hours at the bins going through every item, but I can't do that when it's on a rack at a thrift store. What's that about? Okay. Uh, sorry, I, I digress. My second category or my second choi choice or whatever was, uh, was a hard good. And I don't sell or source hard goods very much. I have 23 items in my home shop at or the part of my closet on Poshmark. Uh, but I wanted to find a glassy baby. And I didn't. Uh, did I work really hard on trying to find a glassy baby? Of course not. Because in order to look at hard goods, you have to be at a regular thrift store. I mean, I do at a yard sale, there's hard goods also, but um, definitely not at the bins. If there was a glassy baby at the bins, it would be in pieces, I'm sure. Um, so no, I didn't find a glassy baby. And if I ever find a glassy baby, I'll be very happy, but I probably won't. Uh, next were Doc Martens just because I really like Doc Martens. And when I first started using the bins as a real sourcing place, I would find them, you know, periodically when I go and it just seemed to dry up and I never found them anymore. Um, I also source online auctions and I did pick up some there, but you pay up and I need to be more careful with that. So this year I bought five pair of Docs and I only sold two. So. I need to really think about it anytime I see a pair. I mean, at the bins or at a yard sale where everything's really low price, I could be riskier, but I probably won't be purchasing them on online auctions. I did pick up a pair at a thrift store this year that was a, a place that prices up, but they were having a sale, so it was it was not astronomical. They were men's and they actually sold really quickly. So it's just gonna depend on the Doc Martens. So anyway, I was not all that successful with that one. Number four, I mentioned Teeks and Rothy's, uh, just because I've never found them. Every reseller, at least once in a while in their videos, has a pair of Teeks or Rothy's and I've never found them. And I know that the the they're not as hot as they used to be, but I want to find them. Everybody else can. Why can't I? Uh, but I didn't. The fifth one was Vintage Western, you know, a category. I like that stuff. That's all. That's why. I like to pick up Vintage Western. And we do periodically, I do find that stuff at the bins here and there. Um, we have the National Final Rodeo here. So, you know, there's there's some stuff. And I'll almost always pick it up if I, if I you know, if it's in good condition and the right price. Um, and in fact, the number one in my next section is Vintage Western. So the next section is Brands that I discovered in 2023, like Bolos in 2023. So the first one was uh, Cripple Creek. It was specifically a men's blazer and it did pay up for it. It was from a thrift store, but again, they were having a sale because I only go to thrift stores pretty much if there's a sale. Um, and it still is paying up, but I sold it pretty quickly and I believe I sold it full price. Cripple Creek, I, I'm pretty sure I've heard of it from my, you know, Western clothes wearing days, which was like 20 years ago. Um, and I would definitely pick that up again, but not blindly. None of these is really just pick it up. If you see that name, I, I always try to do, there's a few things that I probably would pick up without even looking, but for the most part, I look, uh, the next one is, is, uh, two, two. I put the, I put two cause they're similar. Um, they're, they're handbags. Um, one is Helen Kaminsky. I picked up a, I'm looking at my computer because I, uh, I want to tell you something about Helen Kaminsky. Okay. So I found this bag in, uh, at a yard sale. It's like a basket weave, which is something I would never buy for myself because I really don't like it very much, but I could tell it was a good quality leather. So I quickly look at, uh, looked it up and, uh, I bought it and it sold quite quickly. Can't remember if it was full, full price or not. It was early in the year, but I will I will pop in pictures as I discuss these. Uh, Helen Kaminsky, uh, well, what it says is, Helen Kaminsky has been synonymous with style, integrity, and authenticity. 
She started in 1983 making a handcrafted raffia hat for her kids and to shield them from the harsh Australian sun. And now she's a global brand. I don't think she does clothing, um, but I, she definitely does hats. I've seen some of her hats on the online auction. If I found a Helen Kaminsky hat at a yard sale or the bins, I would probably give it a try. But I believe that when I looked up the comps, it wasn't worth paying up the online auction price. And then in the same category is Marta Ponty. I picked, I actually did buy this bag in uh, from an online auction, so I paid up for it and it sold full price. Marta Ponty does not do clothes. They are all like purses and that kind of stuff. And they were initially uh, in manufactured in Portugal. Hang on, I had something about them here. Let me see if I can find it. So Marta Ponti uh, is a collection of Italian vegetable leather handbags manufactured in Portugal. So she has handbags and that type of accessory, not a clothing designer. Um, so that's why I put those two together. The third one is Will Leather Goods. I picked up this bag at the bins and I liked it right away. It's got, it had leather accents, like a book bag or a laptop bag, but not but not the kind of laptop bag designed for that, you know, with the padding, I don't think. Um, I don't remember. We'll see what it says when I pop up the thing there. Uh, but anyway, it's like that oil, oil or, or wax coated canvas. So I just like that kind of thing. When I saw it, uh, at the bins, I grabbed it and I did do a quick look up and I was like, oh, these sell pretty well. And it did sell very quickly. So I would pick that up again. Number four, two brands because they're similar. They, I learned about them this year. I bought them and I sold them. The first one is Charlie One Horse. So there's two Charlie One Horses. So should be Charlie Two Horses, but uh, I can't help myself. Charlie One Horse Hat Company, which I don't believe is related to Charlie One Horse Boot Company. And Charlie One Horse Boot Company is owned by Lucchese. And most resellers know that that's a total bolo. Um, I don't believe it said Lucchese on the boot, but it is Lucchese. So when you list it, you will men you mention that it's Lucchese. And these sold, even though they were... I picked them up at a yard sale. They were in like new condition. They were very small, which is sometimes not good. Um, but I did sell them in a, you know, in a reasonable amount of time. And then along the same lines, here is a boot company called Oro, uh, which is Oro Los Angeles, O-R-O. -O. I paid up for these because I bought these at online auction. But I, at the time that I bought them, I could only find one pair that were identical and they were listed at 450 I doubt they sold for that, uh, but they still sell well. I sold mine for, I think like 160 or 170. And um, so I would, I would, you know, if I found those at, at a yard sale or at, a, or at the bins, I would definitely pick those up. And the fifth one, fifth and last one, um, uh, the Teams, Teams, Times, T-I-E-M-S. They were cycling shoes, I believe. Uh, were they? it'll be here. Um, I saw, I bought these on online auctions. A lot of times something like this, I will put in the first bid. Um, and if other people bid, I won't go any further. And I'm pretty sure I got this for opening bid. Um, that I seem to recall that the TMs did okay, but it was this particular pair that did better because they were black and gold and they were either, uh, a limited edition or rare or a, like an anniversary edition. There was something special about the black and gold ones and they were really nice and they they sold for a good, they gave me a decent profit and sold very quickly. Um, I'm trying to remember. I don't even remember if those sold on Poshmark. Um, well, you'll probably be able to tell when I post the picture, but they sold and they sold at a good pace. So, whew. The final category, the final section of this, chapter three, is what do I want to find this year? What are the five bolos I want to find this year? So, number one. I feel like I'd heard this name before, but it didn't stick. I was looking at online auctions, and I saw a handbag, and it was Jacquemus. 
J-A-C-Q-U-E-M-A-S. And it was, it went high. So I did some searching and I would like to find a Jacquemus handbag. Well, then when I looked up the company, they are not just a handbag company. So I cannot speak for the clothing because I haven't looked that up yet. Uh, and sometimes with certain designers, the, it's not all a bolo. It's only one particular thing, like the bags or whatever. Um, but obviously, if I found anything Jacquemus, I would stop and, and look it up. Um, Jacquemus is known for designing uncompl uncomplicated clothing with transparent details. I don't know. They show off the female body in the most flattering way. A typical French concept with a modern twist. And so the designer's name is actually Simon. It's probably Simone Port Porte. There's no accent there. Port Jacquemus. So, yeah, I would like to find something Jacquemus. And number two, I would like to find a Hammett bag. I do see Hammett bags on the online auctions, but these also go too high. So I want to find one at a yard, at a low priced yard sale or the bins. Now I don't really find bags very often at the bins. And there's two reasons for that. Number one, there isn't a bag devoted, a, bag, a bin devoted to bags. It's generally just thrown in with the, um, like sheets and blankets and odds and ends like that. Um, and at one point they told another reseller who likes those bins that they weren't going to be having that stuff anymore. But I have gone back since then and they do still have it, but they just didn't have as much. Um, and so that's one of the reasons. The other reason is, so our bins, they empty out an entire side of the room and then refill it. And then we all rush to whatever suction. So the, Bins with the sheets and where they throw in the handbags is on the same is on the same side of the room as the shoes. So I always go to the shoe bins first, which means by the time I get to the sheets, the people who start there have already picked through and probably gotten any good handbags. So that's not to say I never find them. I mean, I did find that nice Will Leather Goods bag, uh, but I may be missing out on some really good ones just because I go to shoes first. But I'm always going to go to shoes first. I mean, I just. I'm just going to do that. Uh, Hammett is a is just um, doesn't do clothes or anything like that. They believe in connecting one on one with you and inspiring the contagious feeling of Hammett. We create functional and beautiful designs for you to share as a symbol of past, present, and future connections. And something I learned just this past week: they do manufacture in China. So if you see a high, even though it's a high high fairly high priced, um, you know, designer bag. Um, don't be fooled or think it's automatically fake because it says made in China. Um, they, I believe, created their own um, manufacturer. They don't just contract with, with some random one, um, but they couldn't, they couldn't sustain the pricing uh, without going to China is what I read. So I'd like to find that. Next, I would like to find Goldberg, G-O-L-D-B-E-R-G-H. I can't remember why. I saw something on the online auctions, and then when I looked, uh, and it went too high, and then when I looked, I noticed that Goldberg sells really, really high. Um, everything does. So, uh, I think that they do, they do, Goldberg promotes luxury, quality, and confidence. Our, st our signature style is fiercely feminine with a classic silhouette and surprising head-turning fashion elements with its focus on fashion and the perfect fitting sports and ski wear. So I love that category because I do pick up ski wear whenever I can. Uh, Goldberg is an instant, instant success on the slopes, city, and health club. Love that kind of stuff. Um, so I want to find that. That's all. And let's see, the next one is, okay, it's a Lambertson bag. And it's not just any Lambertson. I think the company's actual name is Lambertson Truex. Known for a contemporary vision and classic luxury, Lam Lambertson Truex was founded in 1998 by Lambertson and Truex. Um, anyway, uh, so... This is particular bag, and that's because I have seen this particular bag 
twice on online auctions and both times it sold too high for me to source. Now it's been a while, so if you look it up now, I don't know what you're gonna find. But at that time, I tried to find that specific bag on Poshmark and I could only find one. It was not sold. It was listed at $1,200, which I think is crazy. Um, it might be why it didn't sell. And other Lamberts and stuff was not even close to that. Um, so it just made me want to buy that bag and see what happened. So I think if I find any Lambertson, I'm gonna look it up because I think it's a decent brand. Um, I won't necessarily buy it blindly. I mean, I might buy it blindly if it's at the bins or a couple of bucks at a yard sale, but you know what I mean? It's, it's still, you still have to do the research. You just do, or I do. You do what you do. Um, and the final category is backpacks. I specifically want to find uh, like travel backpacks, hiking backpacks. Those things can cost a lot and people spend money on it. Um, if you're going to travel the world or wherever you cross Europe and you, you're going to carry everything in a backpack, you're going to, you want a good backpack. So, and I believe those can sell for quite a bit. So that's just a category I'd like to get into. Um, and that is it. That was all the homework I had for this collab. If you stayed this long, congratulations. I know I can get long-winded, uh, but I do appreciate if you stayed. If you, if you don't mind, hit the thumbs up on the way out. That will just make me feel good. And you're welcome to subscribe and hit the bell notification. Um, I don't release a lot of videos. They're mostly haul videos. Um, I just love to share my stuff. So I just need people to share it with. All right. Again, please visit the other, um, the other videos in this series. All the links are at the bottom and I will see you next year.